Welcome to Jesse Stories, everyone. Um, if you like the content so far, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. And thanks so much for being here, Avery. If you would introduce your role on Escaping Twin Flames and yeah. what you did, uh, be appreciated. Go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, my name's Avery. My pronouns are he, him. Um, and on Escaping Twin Flames, I was one of the associate producers. Um, and um, yeah, basically my biggest task during the run of the show um, was sifting through watching hours and hours of footage um, that we had gotten from Twin Flames Universe um, and finding basically all the the damning moments, you know, just all the all the moments, everything that jumped out, whether it's something that made you laugh, something that made you cry, something that terrified you, all the all the big feelings. Um, that it was my job, my job to find those um, mainly. Did did some other stuff too. <laughs> uh, can you walk me through a typical day uh, in your role as associate producer? Um, yeah. So most of us were working in the office um, together, uh, which was great. There weren't many shows um, at ITV that were working in the office, all hands on, all together. So it was a bit more special for us to all be able to physically be in the same space um, and work together. Um, now, not all of us were in LA. Some of us were on the East Coast. So we were on Zoom and Google meetings almost every day um, talking to them. Um, but but yeah, a typical day for me was basically, you know, and, and as you know, Twin Flames Universe has hundreds of hours of footage, whether it's classes or their YouTube videos or secret, you know, meetings like secret footage that we got access to through some of the members. Um, and we, I was, you know, told by, you know, Inbal or Cecilia or any any of the producers what kind of stuff to look for. Or we had a spreadsheet that um, that like spelled out kind of moments that we knew probably existed, but we had to find, you know, or like Jeff talking about being, you know, the second coming of Christ. Or or moments about baby Grace and how she'll you know be celibate. Um, like knowing that there are all these things that we wanted to have for the show, all this evidence really that we needed um, to back up a lot of what our participants said in their interviews. Uh, so I was on Avid and on on the computer, just scrubbing through footage, scrubbing through script, trying to find anything and everything, and then I'd collect them throughout the day. Um, and you know create string outs on on Avid or, or write out you know exactly what I found and would share that with the EPs and then it would kind of be this process of here's all this stuff that I think is great and then um, in Mal and Cecilia picking and choosing what they wanted to you know possibly include in the show um, and that, that was mainly it and otherwise you know during the beginning I was um, helping to create all the, like the physical storyboard. Um, so basically, like, uh, Inbell had this whole online storyboard where it's all these, you know, hundreds of sticky notes and, you know, just a lot of, um, like, she was just, like, constantly editing, like, what would go, you know, in each episode and what would, what would the order of things would be. Um, and so it was, it was my job toward the beginning when I first started on the role to make the physical, you know, copy of it. And I would just do everything online, um, you know, uh, edit everything on like pages and and create all these note cards and print them out and do pictures and make them make them look all nice. And it was um, it was just work to make everything easier and better for for the editors and for Inbal Cecilia to to see everything right in front of them um, as they were starting to put the episodes together. Um, and yeah, and then my role kind of turned into more creative, more of what an associate producer does um, when I was helping to scrub, scrub through footage and and especially um, give my input on a lot of the LGBT related things. And thank goodness for that too. So you are part of the community just like me, even though cis female, well, yeah, cis yeah, female who went through guy. quite the opposite of <laughs> yeah. what someone who's trans goes through. Um, but yeah, as you saw in Jesse's interview. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely is a unique perspective to be able to give. Um, I think it was probably hopefully part of why I was hired on in the first place um, to be able to, to give my perspective. Um, I first started on on the show, not as an associate producer, I was just helping out actually, um, because I wanted to get into producing, but I had never had a producing role yet. And I was just be I was a post production assistant for all of ITV and all of their shows um, for about a year before I got on Escaping Twin Flames. Um, but my bosses all knew about my goals um, and I was making the efforts to to reach out to people and try to become you know, in, more involved in projects or, or talk to producers and just learn more about what it's like. Um, and so they actually told me one day, like, oh, hey, we have this new show coming in. Um, they need an extra hand. You know, they, it turns out they have a lot of footage they need to go through or, or, or whatnot. 
Um, but they sat me down in a meeting first, actually. Um, not not everybody with Escaping Twin Flames, all of my the, the bigger bosses at ITV, they, they sat me down before putting me on this project and um, and told me in privacy what, you know, vaguely what the show was about and wanted to make sure that it was something I actually wanted to do because they knew it would probably be pretty heavy and harder than anything I've ever done before. Um, and even though I heard them in the moment, I was um, I, I still it was I still had no idea how um, insane the show was would be or not not the show but how insane everything would be everything i learned i mean i didn't know anything about twin flames universe before i started working on the show and then i just was put head first into learning anything and everything and um and it, i'm still 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 wrapping my head around um everything i had to watch and everything i learned well i think a good percentage because a lot of it i know i was a part of like some of the deeper meanings that i saw that was posted like the upper upper level since i was right on the cusp for mm-hmm. leaving so i was a part of a lot of those meetings and watching the recordings of them because sometimes my role in leadership i had to make sure to be in the coaching stuff say my two cents and explain what's happening right now with sales and everything mm-hmm. but uh, yeah it was interesting to see what footage was chosen and then to learn as I've been interviewing everyone, kind of learning the footage that didn't make it, the footage that was thought about and the possible, since I know, Jesse, I don't know with you, Avery, I can't screw you on that, but the feeling like getting brainwashed, aka coerced, watching it. The- Actually, I, I didn't thought about that at all until I watched Jesse's interview where you you said to them you you know like what you said something like you know you're basically being brainwashed or you're basically being in, not indo- indoctrinated yeah, yeah indoctrinated absolutely. into the cult and I and like I literally was watching the interview and being like can I was like I don't want to believe that because I I'm I was not you know I I'm not I'm not you and I I'm not you know like oh, I want to I don't want to I tend to downplay my own experiences all the time but then listening to you say that to Jesse like kind of let me accept like oh like maybe watching all that footage did actually really affect me in a negative way that I didn't think would because I thought I was above it but I didn't realize that it actually it, it got me and I had to ask um, to leave home to leave to go home a couple days early um, from just watching some footage that footage that didn't make it in you know a lot of jeff being like really anti-semitic um that that didn't make it in but i yeah Yeah. it still gives me chills to think about well and there's footage that i don't think but i don't know some of the footage that what didn't make it like there's been a lot of facebook lives that they had i don't know if they were well technically face towards it and if they saved it like they got pretty bad at least with coaches when it came to gif and praising them and making sure we're making sales like some of it's made it to public but not all of it like some of the basic stuff that not as harsh as it actually gets to be like I didn't personally so you went through the same phase most people when they're leaving out of a cult gets of oh my gosh that actually did affect me oh my gosh that actually is bad like for me it hit me as soon as I got out of the cult that's why I wrote my articles that got desisted <laughs> but um it does take a moment to realize oh my gosh I was getting indoctrinated I was getting rehearsed I was getting this you can still be a third party like I still give Sarah Bourbon full credit for becoming a part of the group without meaning to <laughs> but right. starting as a third party and I give credit to you and Jesse for getting indoctrinated in no longer being third party because to watch that and to watch it doesn't matter if you go above 10 hours you're automatically getting indoctrinated in because it doesn't take it takes all the sales tactic all the watching and being told to continue to watch the torture including of animals is upsetting i couldn't handle it then but you were told that that's just a block you have (laughs) and to mirror it that is literally the number one thing you were told if there is any issue whatsoever it doesn't matter your grandma died your puppy's sick your Mm -hmm. friend is sick uh that's your problem you're the one who who brought that in your reality and to you need yeah. to take care of it it's heartbreaking <laughs> it's no i remember watching like angie's story you know from just her saying uh, like a week after she left the coal i think her her grandfather um passed away and like her first immediate thought was it's my fault and that you know every t- it, it, it breaks my heart yeah it gets so ingrained in you that's why i'm thankful that we did have even though they were both competitors regardless yeah we had two going in and at least each one brought different 
respect, but I still have favoritism over Netflix regardless. So <laughs> our <laughs> docuseries by far, but okay. right. And I don't know if Amazon did, but Netflix did offer us therapy sessions. Um, I did not take them up on that, but I regret not taking them. <laughs> I didn't take them up on that because I read the fine print that I won't say publicly, but I can tell you after. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> maybe, maybe it was a good thing then. <laughs> Well, at least for, I guess, for participants slash contributors, uh, at least for them, like when I was sent the paperwork to sign to be able on set to get the therapist if I needed the therapist, I did sign for the on set, but I didn't take it at all. Next question, Avery. Ready? Do you have a favorite memory on set or multiple favorite memories on set? Favorite memory. So one thing is that I was never on set. Or I not. think I was the only person that was never actually on set. I, you know, I know you probably just mean in general. In general, yeah. Right, yeah, I don't know. But but one thing about me is that I was never on set. Um, like I said, I, I was I was the last person to join the project, not by far after. I just was, I was never supposed to be on the project in the first place. Let's just say that. But um, then you got on, it was great. Then I got on. Yeah, well then, right, they needed a helper and, and I just started helping out and then I w- worked my ass off honestly um and then they they offered me the the promotion as an associate producer um so it was incredible um and i'm so thankful for everybody and everything in that show but um but it was it was a lot um favorite memory i gotta think about it. a post of, a post of favorite memory i kind of want to i have like a proudest memory kind of a, a proudest memory of, of of when it came to my job and what when i was most proud of myself during during it does that does that count that counts yeah go for it <laughs> Okay, because fun, fun is fun is a complicated word when it comes to this show. There, there wasn't wasn't a lot of fun. It was well, yeah, it's a hard subject and trauma. I know on my part, trauma even in interviews have been brought up because dealing with trauma. And yeah, for everyone who talked on film, who was a contributor slash participant, you're yeah. gonna go back in time and you're gonna relive that trauma whether you want to or not. But instead in front of a recording camera <laughs> right and right a lot of the a lot of the fun moments i think of are like you know the moments in between where we where it things are so serious but somebody cracks a joke to lighten the mood or like you know sarah like sarah mave i i think back to her her like one line that always makes me laugh of being like oh i, I something about i'm jewish so i'm i was never looking for the second coming in the first yeah. place and like it's like those little <laughs> moments that are, right like making light out of something like horrible but sometimes all you can really do is, is smile and laugh when when things are so bad and at least you know everybody's in it together um but my most fun or or or, or if i could more so say my most proud moment was kind of when i was first getting into really helping creatively like helping with storyboards and more so getting into helping you know look look through footage and becoming more aware of just the the story um and and wrapping my head around everything um because it's you know when you first joined the project it, it takes you a minute to really understand what's going on and what what we're doing here um but our I don't know, so right so so i'm a trans guy right and jesse the other uh, archival producer is another uh, other trans guy and we are the two trans people on the team not the only queer people but the only like trans people yeah so so toward the beginning not really the beginning but before we were really putting all the episodes together and we were and and you know and our eps were still hamming out all the everything that they wanted in the episodes and what was going to make it and what wasn't going to make it um kind of in, in the earlier stages and it was kind of the first time that i was brought into the conversation of when it when it came to the trans community and how everything that went on in Twin Flames universe and all the divine masculine, divine feminine, the the you know uh, uh, potential you know forced gender conversions um, are um, cr- creatively it was still being decided like how that was how it was going to be talked about um, and one of the initial ideas that came up was like frankly it, it was kind of equating getting top surgery you know getting the, you know, chest mas- masculinization surgery kind of equating that with other tactics that cults have used like forced branding or forced sterilization um oh right which like understandably i can see the connection but when you think about it deeply or when i think about it deeply and when jesse thought about it deeply we go okay while well, there's a connection there they are not the same thing and equating top surgery with branding is dangerous to the trans community it is it is not okay 
Um, and that is absolutely not, or at least what I what I thought was absolutely not a necessary part of, not a necessary something that needed to go into the story. It was, we did not need to say that getting, forcing top surgery was like forcing branding. It was the same thing. Um, and and, and I, I wrote a long email and Jesse wrote a long email and we had a very mature back and forth with other creatives on the team to discuss this. And, you know, it was even a, a a clip was edited together to be able to even like put it in like it was a it was like a real possibility um and and uh, after Jesse and I kind of spoke up some more and it wasn't just Jesse and I it was the rest you know other other you know um people on the producing team as well um kind of quickly spoke up and said that is uh not something that needs to or should be included so it was not and it was a proud moment of myself because I was absolutely terrified to to speak up as a 23 year old I wasn't even an associate producer yet. I was just helping out because I could. Um, it was terrifying for me to to speak up against people with a lot more power and um and and but but I but I had to. I needed to. And it was only the beginning of many more conversations that happened after that. Um, but that was kind of the first big one for me. And I was really proud of myself for um, for standing up for myself and, and for the trans community. Well, thank goodness for that, too. Because there's, yeah, Jeff and Shalia are anti-LGBTQIA by far. But like in one of my interviews, I don't remember. I've had too many <laughs> for this that I can't keep track of everyone's. But with someone who was, no, it was Morgan. It was Morgan, my very first for this. Um, with Morgan, at least, because all of everyone spoke in the series at least we had a lot of people asking is jeff gay is he blah 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 and for me personally i feel it's not out of question of if he is because when you're taught because at least for me personally in my experience i was taught that you're going to hell pretty much like my grandma would straight up say you're going to hell if level up another woman very <laughs> um that is just a fact mm -hmm. and yeah so you're definitely have that instilled in you and i could see that taken in internally and for a narcissist taken out of proportion and putting it on every single person possible to go i don't want to give into my feelings so you're going to be this so i keep it as a possibility that jeff could be that's where the pure hate towards self technically comes from but that's just a possibility not speaking yeah. for him not doing any of that just saying it's a possibility well, that's, that's the thing and that's the thing when it came to to equating forced top surgeries with forced branding, it's like, well, forced branding is always forced brand. There's yes. no <laughs> hands or butts about it. But <laughs> we have said and will continue to say, we're just as bad as Jeff. Uh, we're just as bad. At, well, not, you know, I'm not going to say we're no, not. just as bad, but we're we're doing a similar thing as Jeff and Chalia. If we're saying these people are not trans, you force them to be trans. They're not trans. Yeah. The truth is we don't know. And we don't know that they were truly forced to do this. And, and we won't know. And maybe we'll never know. It's, it is completely up to the individual to to discover and realize that for themselves. But just equating those two things felt felt wrong because we know force branding is bad. We we don't know that these top surgeries were 100% forced, though we have clues and evidence to to back come it. to the finding, to, to back that up. But but truthfully, we can't know 100%. No, I know some, at least those who were part of my soul family, there were some of those that did come in already trans. Mm -hmm. And then there are those that I was with that was part of the same group as I was being told, you're pretty much a man now start looking like it <laughs> so i do right. know that so i definitely know that that possibility just like i said with jeff yeah. is definitely yeah, a possibility <laughs> even if we have like a 90 95 percent idea that that it's one way we we can't know 100 percent, and that's that's sadly that's because like you said it's up to the individual individual just like with me because i personally have people around me that are trans and i grew up around trans um, I know what it feels like due to that, like not physically feels like just the experience. So at least when I was told I was a divine masculine, it was an automatic sick to my stomach, want to throw up. This isn't right, right. feeling right. <laughs> because. Yeah. And I think, I think it's extremely interesting and like a testament to like the, the validity of trans people's existence because somebody who is cisgender, somebody who maybe was in your position, who was told they were something else, you like immediately felt that gender dysphoria of like, no, that's not who I am. And so it's like, if you can feel that way, then I, then I could feel that way, you know? Yeah. And you can feel, 
I'm in the wrong body. And actually, because that's the actual experience of I'm in the wrong body. Mm. And no one's telling you that you're in the wrong body. That's also a difference. I like to point out the difference because not everyone is educated in this area. Right. So it's good to just highlight that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I had the opposite of what a, which I don't want to speak for a trans individual, have, right. which I'm not speaking for all trans. I'm just saying I had the experience and yeah. to have the actual experience, you're actually happy because you're making it to the point of your true self versus and, being told yeah. this is your truth. <laughs> yeah. And like, right. And it's, and there's people, people can, people are whoever they are. And a lot of people experience gender dysphoria and that's how they, you know, ultimately learn that they are, they are trans and that they, and then they want to tr- transition into who they want to be. But I, I'm also like a firm believer that it doesn't being trans doesn't act it doesn't actually have to be noted by like hating who you were like just love who you are who you want to be and if you were you know I'm not going to speak for you but I think you you never had an issue being perceived or being a woman so it's like mm-hmm. why why change something where where there wasn't a problem in the first place yeah exactly like I did go through my phase because that was brought up trauma wise for me. Actually, when I was told I was a divine masculine, I haven't mm-hmm. talked about this, but I guess it's good to talk about it. Um, I did in the past, I did question if I was in the wrong body. I even dressed as a male when I was younger, which is normal for a child. I want to put that out there to experiment with yeah. the other gender of just doing that. And I thought I could attract more women that way. So I dressed like a dude. I tried talking like a dude. It just didn't feel good. Like even my clothing didn't feel good. And just doing that didn't feel good. So when I was told I was divine masculine, it brought me right back to my childhood and trying to do that. And the first thought in my head is I've already done that. I've already been there. I don't need to go there again because I know in my heart, I'm going to totally use what they teach against them. I know in my heart, my truth and my truth is I'm a woman. It doesn't feel comfortable comfortable for me. I do like men's clothes, like sweatshirts specifically, but who doesn't, honestly? Um, So it's just that. You can still like male's clothing and be a female. You can still, because the way Jeff and Chiliot's the, is very much 1950s in the old day of you can't do this because then you're a male. You can't do that. Oh, you need to chop off your hair. I right. even tested out when I was little. I did this to see what I would look like. <laughs> right. So I even <laughs> oh, did, I did that. that too. <laughs> <laughs> I tested things out. So what they're doing feels so wrong. And it's hurting the LQIA community, at least from my perspective, also being a part of it more than anything. What they're doing is that's around to what's already happening in politics and everything to everyone that is just part of the community. Sadly, trans are the ones that are mainly getting it. Suck, and I hate it. But yeah, yeah. no, it's it's a shame. But um, but they, I mean, just I, I wish being queer, being trans, didn't have to be such a focus on people's identities. But with the way the world is, it unfortunately is a deep part of just who we are and our identities but that just that just goes to show that when it comes to our deep identities that there's no place for anybody else to tell you who that identity is supposed to be it is it is up to up to me yeah it's it's, yeah exactly it's not up to jeff or shalia or some stranger on the street Right. Or like, I've had a very horrible experience in the car who was a person just driving me back to my car after it was fixed. Another story that no one's heard, <laughs> but he was trying to push on me uh, straightness. Like he said, don't you see yourself growing old with a man? I went, no, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept on trying to push that on me and going, you know, God meant for you to be with a man, not a woman. That was literally our conversation. And yeah, I had to text a family member who fully understands this and say, uh, I just tried to get indoctrinated into being straight in a car. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the person I was talking to's reaction was, "Yeah, yeah, people do, people do suck." And I just wish more people minded their own business and just lived their own life and did their own thing to be happy. Because that's all I'm trying to do. And it doesn't make sense for people's mission to be to change other people. It that seems like a waste of time. Yeah, no, so I honestly like where this conversation's going. Yeah, it makes no sense. Like you can just again. I'm not ever taking away all the stupidness that is happening trans politically, but uh, whatever part of the community, since we're all together in this, that you're in, sadly, we all still get the indoctrination forcing or that we're forcing Mm. um, our agenda on others. Though I do love what Nadine said, so I'm going to quote her in this because what she said is great is how do you not know that we indoctrinated into straight? 
of being straight. How do you, how do you know? What proof do you right. That's my favorite right. she ever said, besides explaining that. things in our interview. I really loved her saying that. I love that. I love Nate. Oh. I love Nate. So is everyone. It's apparently saying that, but so is oh. everyone <laughs> behind the scenes and on the film itself in the docuseries. Everyone is amazing. Everyone is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Do you feel, in your personal opinion, Jeff and Shalia are hurting the trans community? That's a big question, but the the answer the answer is one hundred percent yes. Um, I I most definitely feel that Jeff and Shalia are harming the trans community in so many ways. Like I, it it scared it honestly did scare me, and and I'm sure as it scared a bunch of people, what putting this putting this show out there would mean in terms of giving people fuel to the fire that already exists of trans people are indoctrinating people to be trans. And here we are putting this, you know, premium docuseries out there telling the world, hey, these people are forcing people to be trans. And then knowing everything that's already blowing up in the media and the right wing about how that, that's all it is, like it, it terrified me that, that sharing Jeff and Shalia with more people in the world would hurt the trans community um, even more. And although they are 100% hurting trans people and hurting everybody in general, yep, true. I have <laughs> everybody. Yeah, uh, I have. You know, I, I've learned that. Uh, well, this is e- e- even though they're hurting everybody, I- I've come to learn that. You know, knowing that they are such a tiny percentage of people, and 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 knowing that we included um, Doctor Adair saying such important things like this is very abnormal. This is not what trans people are doing like making sure that we had somebody in there spelling out this is not a normal thing this is not something that should you know where wind should be picked up and and the, and this is, and like the craze should be even crazier about what trans people are doing or or what uh, what what I'm trying to say is um is that it was for the for the better ultimately that this show was put out there and I'm very glad that it was because more attention more attention the better I think I think Jeff and Shalia are 100% damaging damaging the trans community um, because their unfortunate existence in their little pocket. Oh God, I am mad at them. And so it's coming out in this. That's fine. You're, show you're mad. That's great. Honestly, you show it because they I suck. And I, that's me putting it lightly because I really want to say other things. But I know that YouTube, you can't. So they suck. <laughs> um, yeah, well... To put it to put it bluntly, Jeff and Shalia are like making a bad name for trans people. Like they absolutely like, yes, fully. Like and and they are this so cis, so straight, so white. Like so white. <laughs> Just want to add that. So white. <laughs> they have to literally go and pay for its hands to look otherwise. <laughs> um. They're they're forcing people, potentially forcing people to be trans to to save their own little money, big fortunate big money business where they didn't, you know, we can't say for sure, but it's it seemed so that they had a lot of women on, in the organization, mm-hmm. and but they were promising all of these women that they would have their twin flames, and but that twin flame had to be a divine masculine because it has to be, um, but since but but it, you know their promises weren't really being fulfilled and so they had to come up with a solution to said problem oh well what if half of the people in this group are actually those divine masculine and what if all of the people in this group actually are paired up with each other and you know like we can't we can't know for sure there, these are all speculative things there's only so well, much we can i can do. confirm and deny at least some of that like especially saying like when i was there so i can only say from the time period i was there so when i was leaving in 2020 majority of people were female and identified as being there was yes less in there and there was still the mixture there but again you have to have a divine masculine so male counterpart there was maybe at most at that time like five percent males in there and they were already technically came in couple well they came in with their twin flame and were already living together or in a relationship and just looking for further help and they ended up becoming a part of the inner circle so most of those were just part of inner circle so that didn't count with everyone else so majority yes i can confirm were female and i was part of that majority of female but at the time when i was there i was part of the small majority of those that were part of the lq because there was like five maybe six people during my time that's including Arcelia in there and a couple others. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. 
<laughs> we, right. We can't say it for sure, but it, it seems like they had to find a solution to their problem. Um, and they don't actually care about these people. No. I don't even think they, yeah. You're just their moneymaker. Yeah, that is all you maker. are. Like your yep. business isn't your business. I did that in my React video trying to explain that. You're just a funnel or Jeff, right. technically. And- and even though they saw each other over, you know, over seeing their faces like we're seeing each other's faces right now, they didn't have to actually face all these, most of these people in person or or they'd maybe at meetups later on. Actually, that doesn't really matter. Well, no. the only ones just to cope with that, the only ones they will ever meet up with are their inner circle and coaching. That's it. They won't Uh ever go below that. They might do like a personal message to them if they really need them for something because they have an ability that's going to further their business. But you are literally, you're not a human. You're not even a number. You're just there for their spit lies and make you feel like with love bombing that you're important or make you feel like you're in a community though you're technically just, again, (laughs) their moneymaker, their their object of cash. And when you no longer can do that for them, they don't do. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah, well, that's a th- right. And so they don't care about these people and they just have a find a solution to their problem and make it so by telling all these people that identify as women that they're actually men mm-hmm. um, and doing the very thing that the media is screaming about that trans people are doing to each other. And and honestly, the, right, it's the biggest thing, especially when you bring kids into it. Yeah. That, like one of the biggest arguments in, in arguments in politics, you know, now nowadays and what's taking away so many rights of trans and queer people is that kids, people are being indoctrinated into being trans and that they're being forced into it. And and it, that could it's it's horrible and it couldn't be farther than true except in this one corner of the world this cis straight white couple is actually doing it. I love it every time you say that. I, and I'll keep saying it. <laughs> it works for me. Keep it up. Go Avery. Um and and it, it's it's just it makes me very angry and mad because they're hurting a huge community and taking away potential resources from people that actually need it um and that actually benefit from it and they. It could very well be the people that are that are possibly being indoctrinated. Again, we can't say whether these people are actually, you know, not trans. You know, I I 100% respect and uh, like who they identify as. But again, we have the evidence to show that there's a fair chance that they that it's not who they actually are deep down inside. Um, and it's it's just just pushing. Pu- they're they're just I, again I'll, I'll adding fuel to the fire that. Um, that shouldn't be and uh and they're hurting the trans community in so many ways um and right not only the people within their own community but everybody and it's already not and it doesn't need like there's already resources being taken away at least i know in some states in america for trans children are being taken away specifically which is just wrong because that can literally save a life i like that glad has been doing research and i guess 90 percent of kids right now that cannot get care are sad so um yeah. and like just the, having I, that health care is really important for becoming or i guess physically becoming who you are yeah and who you've always felt you were and yeah it's really sad and upsetting because these are children these are human beings i hate that because people take the word trans and treat it like it's a monster or something i didn't mean to say it like the person the human being is this thing that's not real no that's the person with the heart and skin and feelings and um, yeah everything right and <laughs> that they should person be, is a person right and and the last thing we should be do be doing is and like the last thing we should be doing is taking away resources and we should be giving resources and teaching everybody the options of what lives they could live because that's that's the thing like when i i i wish i discovered that i was trans sooner but i didn't know what being trans meant i think i would have been able to live an extra couple years being a lot happier than i did had i known earlier on that being trans or in existing as a human that i actually could exist as was an option and that's what we need to do is give options and and taking those options away is only going to hurt people and and forcing ideas on someone of who they are is only going to hurt them we just need to let people live their lives and experience it for themselves and give them the options and resources to decide at whatever point they feel comfortable to dive into who they really are and want to become exactly that's all anyone wants it's just to be for one, at least comfortable in your own skin and feeling like, hey, this is actually me and not feeling uncomfortable because like 
my experience in the past of dressing like a dude that was uncomfortable for me but someone who actually is a dude but physically right. in the moment isn't a dude gives opportunity i don't know how to put it nice like put it without i'm trying so hard <laughs> yeah no i got you you were thing is you were you had the option of trying on boy clothes to discover that that was something that you didn't connect with and yeah. that's what kids need is the option to 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 play with things and and go through their phases if it's a phase or maybe it starts off as a phase and you realize oh it's not actually a phase it's actually who I am but like you know it that's that's the thing like me and you growing up signed female at birth kind of trying on boy clothes at the same time and had that option to do that exactly. and then after that with that new knowledge we were I was able to realize who I was and you were able to realize who you were exactly and you get to be your true dude self I like saying <laughs> In case you can't tell, <laughs> you are the man you've always been. And I am the woman, female woman. I'm attracted to woman or saying lady or female. So I never know the correct term to use for even myself because I've been chewed out for just saying words for myself, but for the woman, lady, person thinking I am today. <laughs> I feel similarly. I mean, when it comes to gender, I don't really understand the whole thing. I like where our conversations keep on going towards. Me too. Like, I did look up, well, you already answered the majority of questions, though, <laughs> besides your musical questions that I wrote down. Because <laughs> I saw that you also like to rave. And I saw that with one of the editor, Lang. Can't remember his first name, but something. Um, Lang. Yeah, he yeah. really likes raving too. I saw that with both of you. And that's why for each interview, I'm trying to also incorporate just something about you as an individual. I figured. So it's not like all the stress of escaping Twin Flames. Like in the beginning, yeah, because I didn't think of doing that. So I didn't think of that with Morgan. I didn't think of that with some of my first school, but or Inval. If I knew, I would have done more of what Inval first, but yeah, that's you can always do around two and you're learning. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know if we have a season two, I will have to do a round two. <laughs> I'm hoping for a season two because Morgan be cool. already described how we will get it to. So she already has whole medicine uh, with how Netflix will give it. So I'm rooting for a person. Okay. And it's fun bringing that up because I want us to just bluntly on it. Yeah, I would love a season two. I mean, I know you've already heard it, but we had so much footage that <laughs> even just from what we already had, we could have made uh, another season. But now with every, I, I'm sure we could film even more. We could make an, a fantastic season too so i i hope so me too i'm not jeff and Chile, but <laughs> that's the only way we'll get it it was just so you know i heard yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's my hope and yep that's all i can say that's my hope <laughs> but to go on to since you did actually answer all those questions naturally without me even asking um do you have a favorite dj right now um i do have a favorite dj right now and i will i'm gonna happily happily promote my best friend um who yeah, do <laughs> happens to be my favorite dj um but uh his name, well, my my buddy's name is Angel. We went to high school together, actually. Um, I'll and, even put his uh, yeah, well, so everything his, in the description too, if you would like that. That would be Angel. cool. Angel's yes. his first name, but his DJ name is Boy. Uh, B O I. B O. Oh yeah, that's why I spell boy too. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, the boy. thing is. My buddy Angel is a trans guy. Um, and oh, the, yeah, I want to totally. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to cut you <laughs> off. I got excited about that, but anyways, no, continue. I thought, well, that's the thing. When when I knew you were going to ask me this question, I got excited because I was like, perfect. I want to talk about you know, boy about about Angel anyway, but it works out even better because he's another like trans like artist that we can put out there. Um, yeah, and I can totally interview it boy is up to it too because yeah. i'm trying to do a dj section who would also be a part of like i told you the queer boys too so yeah. you know the he more would, the better <laughs> he would absolutely love to and he wants to put himself out there and is putting himself out there as like a trans D dj and he wants to be a voice for for the community um and he he wants to do this whole this he's doing this project called boy versus the world where he wants to I'm writing <laughs> sorry yeah, um, where he wants to interview people and he wants to share his his life story and he doesn't know about like any trans guy DJs like out there like he doesn't have the representation um you know he doesn't know of anybody so he wants to be the representation that that he needs um and and for everybody and for everybody else um and he techno house stuff honestly nice. I'm a bit I'm I'm quite new to the to the like music scene um but I really like it and I love my friend and I love his passion um and I couldn't be more proud of him and he started to play shows this past year and I I really think he's gonna he's gonna blow up and I'm, I'm really excited to be there for it well yeah. i definitely want him on here too so i will try to get the info from you <laughs> yeah no <laughs> absolutely out. i'm gonna have him on my talk show soon too <laughs> i'm so excited you're doing too well with um, me at least the point of mine because everyone keeps calling it a podcast maybe 
when I have more of a following, I'll start doing a podcast, but that podcast is still going to be story. And the mm-hmm. whole point of my YouTube channel is Jesse's stories. So that's why Pokemon card opening, not always interviewing. It's full of everything. Stories is everywhere. It's in game, book, movies. Most movies nowadays are based off of books, but movies, you name it. Stories are everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, no, that that would be really cool. But but uh, he, he's fantastic. Yeah. And then since I saw you into a couple of music festivals currently, uh, what's your favorite music festival you have gone to so far? <laughs> I'm honestly, like I said, I'm I'm much newer to the scene, but I I love it and I want to get more into it. Um, but I, I've only really been to a couple. Um, and the two I would want to talk about are ones I went to this past year. First was Halloween in Swanee, Florida. Um, and it was like this spooky theme, EDM, like EDM big music festival. Um, it wasn't just EDM music. They had, you know, bands and all, you know, all violin, like a lot of different stuff. But, um, I went with Angel and that was kind of the first music festival we've really like big one that we've done together. Um, and it was just so much fun. And it, you know, it was, I learned a lot about myself that trip a lot of the people that i was on that trip with kind of were going through a lot of changes at the time um so it was just um although it had its troubles the music was great i loved spending time with friends and love meeting new people and um and yeah and that was a great experience um and then my buddy angel boy actually uh is like the right hand man in in creating this uh, micro music festival called Electric Winter Wonderland um, mm-hmm. that takes place in Florida every year. This past year was only its second year. Um, and it's only, you know, it had about two to 300 people. But um, the, the people that put on the event uh, Bridget and Mikey, they they own this balloon sculpture company, and it's their passion. And it's it's kind of a complicated story, but basically, Angel's uh, like best friends and kind of mentors um, put on this 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 incredible little micro music festival that right now is micro. I'm not sure if it's always going to be micro. Um, it seems to be growing every year, um, but it's it's just a special experience. It's you know kind of invite only, but um, and it's just more curated to be a really fun but healthy, welcoming, like, like weekend experience for everybody that goes. And it's, um, you just know that you're going to be surrounded by good people and it's going to be the best vibes. And when I went this past January, that's probably, you know, by far the best music festival I've ever been to. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for next year. Oh yeah. I like that. Uh, and then are you working any on any projects that you're allowed to talk about? Cause I know when you're doing projects, sometimes you're not always allowed to talk about them, but any projects that you're allowed to hype up or talk about? I know with Mike, he's like one of the only people that, besides Jess, that talked about a project that they were allowed to talk about. Gotcha. Um, well, honestly, after I finished on Escaping Twin Flames last summer, um, I kind of started to go through it emotion- for many reasons and needed a bit of a break from story producing. Um, even though my first gig was with Escaping Twin Flames, it was a mighty one. And my brain needed a break from putting in all that energy into helping to create an amazing story. And I needed to put that energy back into myself. Um, so I worked as a coordinator for some for about six months for this trade out company. Um, and then the past few months, I've been working a post production assistant gig for a game show, um, a, new, a new game show coming out. And then in June, I start working as post PA on another game show. So I'm doing I'm quite different work than what I was. Um, and nothing I'm like devoted to creatively like I was with escaping twin flames but um but this show i'm on now is called tic-tac-toe it's it's tic-tac-toe but t- trivia and you win money at the end um and this next show i'm working on is called the flip side and it's uh, just another new game show so less stressful jobs but still happy to be working in the industry um and i'm hoping and wanting to get back into producing um, you know, sometime in the next in the next year. Uh, it's just rough out here and I'm trying to take care of myself first before I really dive back into my career. Well, mental health is period. Yeah. Like with me, I've had to take just time to myself just to because even for me, at least writing my memoir right now, that takes a lot out of me. Even if I just write a paragraph because you have to physically go back to that moment, write it, live it, and then continue living it as you write it. And then you have to go back to go, oh, did I miss something? And then you continue you so it's just a constant trauma process and remembering like yeah i get it it's good and healthy and i highly recommend anyone take time so that's awesome that you're talking about that that anyone that feels they need to whether it's with therapy or just needing time away from interactions with human period (laughs) i say do it 
I'm off. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And it's something I've given myself some more grace on lately is in trying not to feel so bad about putting a bit of a hold on my, you know, upward career track because I've put a lot of pressure on myself to to be successful and to and to do what I got to do. But I've realized that I can't can't be the happiest person I want to be and the most successful person I want to be and, until I figure out what's going on and helping here. Yeah, helping yourself, making sure you're okay. You're not okay then yeah it's not easy it's right not I, I want to like <laughs> I need to feel secure in like my home and my body before and then after that then I can conquer the world exactly you yeah. already were and you are still even if it doesn't feel like it still are conquering by far absolutely yeah. <laughs> and now we're gonna do to the awkward point I always hate doing this except we I do need more subscribers and I do need more likes so this video gets seen by people. No right. shame. Ready? <laughs> I like it, but I also it's both. It's a love hate. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here, Avery. I appreciated our conversations. They were amazing. Thanks for sharing your experiences. Just your knowledge, period. I'm sure audience-wise will appreciate learning things. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I hope you listen to Avery's story and check out Avery's buddy, boy, I'll leave the info down below and you can like, subscribe down below, leave a comment, question you have, anything down below. I will be reading them and replying, maybe not right away. Sometimes I'm slow because I'm doing life stuff, but I will reply. Thanks so much for being here. Embrace your truth. Tell your story. Like and subscribe. Bye everyone. Peace.